Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and in this particular little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at DynaMesh in ZBrush. So when you open up uh, ZBrush, you'll get this for your interface. The light box will come up where you can actually start with uh, little startup files if you want, particular ones. In this case, we're going to double click on this one, the default DynaWax. And this is what comes up. This is this is the DynaMesh sphere in ZBrush. Uh, we we get our grid in the background. I'm rotating by just holding my down my left button and rotating it around. If I hold down my Alt left, I can pan, and my right Alt and let go, and I can zoom in and zoom out. So you can see actually as we zoom in, you can actually see how. Uh, pixelated or the polygons of the particular mesh. If you hold down Shift F, you can actually see what how the dynas the DynaMesh sphere is actually made. Uh, it's done. They do a really nice job with this. I like to look at the Dyna the DynaMesh sphere as well. DynaMesh itself is really basically endless clay, and you'll see that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift P to turn off our or to shift and hit. Uh, P to shift P to turn off our grid. Again, shift P turns it on, shift P turns it off. Okay. Uh, if we're looking at the Z sphere, uh, the DynaMesh Z sphere, you can see that right now I've got uh, mirroring on. That's why I've got the two little dots here, and it's going to flow in whichever direction I'm going. So whatever I do to one side, it's going to happen to the other side. Okay. Right now, we're not going to actually deal with having that on at this point. I just want you guys get, to get a look at the actual sphere and what we can do with it. Okay, So I'm going to hit X to turn off mirroring. I'm also going to make sure in my stroke, I'm going to switch that to freehand. I'm going to go to the stroke palette up here. Make sure we turn our mouse average up to 15 towards the right, so that way it's as smooth as possible. Okay, Now the beauty of Z... Uh, Z the the DynaMesh Z sphere. Here's what it is: is I can turn around and sculpt detail on, under this particular piece. Okay, and you can see how it ends up stretching in this particular direction. You see the polygons that are stretching there. Okay. Obviously, that doesn't really help us. Uh, I was actually sculpting into that, and I didn't have my back face on, uh, back face mask on. Let me hit Control Z, and I'll show you the back face masking. What it does. If you go up to Brush, to Auto Masking, and turn off this back face mask. Okay. Now, if I turn around and redo that and add that in, you're not going to get that weird, uh, the way it was sucking the, the the polygons in. But you do get that the polygons are stretching see this this is not good obviously if we want to sculpt with that uh, and we continue sculpting with it and we can it just stretches it farther and farther out and it just really is not going to help us with with what we want to be able to do the beauty with DynaMesh is let's say I would this is the start of something I wanted to keep if you just hold down your control key and just draw a rectangle in the background See how it just redistributed the polygons? Now I've no longer got any stretched polygons on that. DynaMesh basically is endless clay. No matter what I do to it, I can keep stretching and stretching and stretching and just hit control and click and drag and it redistributes the polygons. It's just wonderful. It's, it's a great, great tool to sculpt up faces, it to sculpt up uh, entire characters, etc. Let's go ahead and just undo some of this. All right. I'm going to uh, rotate this around. I'm going to select X so my mirroring is back on. You can actually take a look at, if you click on the Geometry tab, here's your DynaMesh. This is the different parameters for it. Right now the resolution is 64 uh, which means it's 64 by 64. That's the, that's the, basically the division of it. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about it is is we can change that resolution, and we will as we're working on this model, just so you can take a look at it. Okay. I'm going to hit Shift F to turn off my polyframe. 
All right, let's start with just the idea of, okay, working in a nose, just something that might equate to a nose. We're just doing some sculpting, not being overly worry, worried about uh, polygon distribution at this point. Again, you can see it's, if I hit Chef F really quickly, you can see it's starting to wonk it out. That's okay, I'm gonna hold down my Shift, blend that in a little bit. Again, all, all the tools, uh, for sculpting that you would generally use on models in ZBrush are also used in the Dynamesh. It's just the same thing. I can hold down at my shift and just blend that down a little bit. Okay. If I hit my shift F, just so you guys can see it, now I'll just hold down my control and click and drag and it redistributed that, made it nice and even. So it's now nice and clean. Shift F to turn that off. Let's go ahead and I'm going to grab by masking, I'm holding down my control key and I'm just going to mask the lower portion of the, the Dynamesh sphere. And I'm going to click on my mask to blend it out. I'm going to hold down my control key and just click in the background and let go. So I'm inverting the mask. I'm going to get into my move tool really quickly. Just click and drag. This is the action line. And I'm going to grab this interior sphere, hold down and hold my shift. I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. Okay. Just help give a, a little length to the face. I'm going to hold down my control key and drag in the background. And we just cleared the mask. If I hold down my shift F, you can see it's starting to stretch a little bit. I'm just going to redistribute those polygons I just did by clicking and dragging. Okay. Shift F just to turn that on. Uh, off. All right, uh, let's just do some, you know, just some basic sculpting. In fact, I'm going to get into, uh, I really love to use the clay buildup uh, with Dynamesh. I don't look at Dynamesh as anything that is going to be a finished model. This will be the start of your model. It's what you build on. When you get to the point that, that you like it, then you get out of Dynamesh and continue your sculpt and your fine details, etc. But Dynamesh is a great way to set all of this up. I'm going to go ahead, the same way we do this on the standard brush, we make sure we go to brush, make sure we go to auto masking and turn the back face masking off on the clay tubes, uh, the clay buildup as well. All right, so let's just go ahead and I'm just stroking in, you know, some cheek, cheekbone areas. Let's get in a bottom lip here. Let's get a little bit of a chin built in. Okay. This is just quick. This is just this is basically sketching in clay. I'm going to hold down my shift. I'm going to blend some of this out. Pull that bottom lip. I'm going to shift that out a little bit. Okay. Again, this is just very very quick, but it, it it's it's great for setting up what you can do with your particular character. It's characters, it's props, it's whatever. I've I've been able to use Dynamesh to do quite a number of different things, not just characters, not just um, um, busts, but I've done props in Dynamesh, etc. It, it's just it's an endless program. That's what I love about it. But there will come a point as you're working with Dynamesh. Give them slightly, just a bit of a bulge working for the eyes. Just building an eyebrow. But there is going to come a time when you uh, hold down your control and redistribute and every time you do that if you'll notice the mesh does blur a little bit it, it softens a little bit so you have to re-sculpt in some details which isn't a problem but there will come a time that as you're working with this that you'll notice that you're you're not getting as much uh, poly resolution because again if I hold down shift F 64 by 64 isn't a lot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click this up to 128. Hit enter. So the next time I click and drag in the background, it just subdivided that. You see that? The polygons got much denser. That just gives me more resolution, Shift F, to add in more uh, of the basic foundations for uh, details for what I'll add in later. Again, I don't use Dynamesh as a finishing tool. It's not. It, it's what I use to 
build up things and build uh, bases for my models, etc. But again, this is a very just a very quick introduction. We're not looking to do any Rembrandt here. We're just trying to get an idea of what you can do with it. You can also mask. I'm going to mask. I'm going to now click in the background to invert that mask. I'm going to do it back this way. Okay, and now I'm going to pull out a little bit of an eyelid on this. Okay, I'm going to do the same underneath here. Invert it. Oop. Yeah, I'm just going to pull a little bit of an eyelid there. Clear it. Again, just a quick caricatured face, and obviously I'm nowhere near done with it, but you can see what you can do as you build up. I mean, again, the same tools you use in sculpting uh, within ZBrush, you can, in fact, use the same tools to build for effect in Dynamesh. And you can actually build the, the areas up and get more of a chin in there. You know, again, very, very quickly, I can actually... If I mask off what could be the ear area and invert that, you can actually, from the top view, is you can actually go for a rotate. And since I'm in mirroring, I'm going to rotate from this angle, and I'm just going to pull that out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, clear that. Now, sometimes if you want, uh, you can hit a clay polish, and then do the um, control click in the background to redistribute the polygons. Clay polish will uh, usually help keep details uh, bet a little bit better as you're refining them. And again, you can now then go for holding down your alt and sculpt in, you know, start working where some of the details are going to be in the ears. Again, this is very fast because this is a very quick overview very brief uh, idea of what you can do with some of the uh, things in, in um, Dynamesh. The nice thing is, is when you're done, I'm just going to sculpt this up a little bit. Again, this is very quick. At any point when you're done, let's say you've gotten to this model, you've gotten to the point that you want to actually start working on a final model or something more finished. All you literally have to do is click off the Dynamesh button, okay? And now hit Control D, just like you'd usually do in ZBrush. And then you can actually go for, you know, masking different parts off and inverting the mask, you know, build that up, blend it down, you know, mask the bottom lip, Invert that around. Let's get that in there in a little bit. So it's a little tighter. You know, and start, you know, your regular sculpting because you were now out of Dynamesh. So it's, again, it's a great way to jump off. I do, like I said, I do a lot of my models with, with Dynamesh building it up. Again, this is a very quick, I mean, this is nothing <laughs> worth keeping this particular face. Uh, but you can see where you can go with this in very short order. So again, Dynamesh, it's it's a great, great tool. It's a great way to actually start a model. You can do entire characters, you can do props with it. Again, the same tools that you use, the same brushes you use in ZBrush, you can use at, on the Dynamesh sphere as well. And then you can get into it and out of it anytime you want. You can jump right back into it. I, if, I, if I click the Dynamesh button, it'll it says, you sure you want to free subdivisions? Yes, just go ahead and do that. And now I'm back into Dynamesh. Now, technically, it, usually when you're getting out of Dynamesh to finish your model, you don't go back into it. But if you hadn't gotten to this point where you were, you know, starting to be happy, you could have jumped back into it, no problem. But again, Dynamesh, it's, ZBrush just really does a great job with something as simple as Dynamesh. But it allows sculptors to do a whole lot of stuff really quickly, really easily. And uh, you get really great results using Dynamesh too. Again, uh, this has been 3dmotive.com. I hope this has been fun for you. And my name is Stephen G. Wells.